Hello friends. So this video may be different than the ones I normally put out. My videos go to different audiences, and, uh, but this could be relevant for everyone because uh, a lot is happening these days and I think we all need to find something to hold on to spiritually. Whatever it is, whatever we define as our higher power, we all need something to a uh, foundation. Um, all I'm going to do is read some psalms, whether you believe or not, uh, it's up to you. Um, but these may be useful just to give us strength when we need it. Psalm 95, come, sing in ecstasy to the Eternal One. Ring out a fanfare to our rock of rescue. Hurry forth in thanks before the presence, shouting in song to Yah. I'm going to say Yah in place of God or any other name. For the Creator is a generous divinity, a sovereign greater than all image gods, in whose hand the planetary depths reside. And we saw that this week with the Webb Telescope. The greatest heights there in Yah's palm. To whom belongs the sea as it was made, the dry land shaped by divine hand. Come, worship, bend the knee. Let's bow to the eminence who made us all. So anything that talks about worship and it has like a royal uh, metaphor, I have difficulty with. And uh, it is a challenge to be humble before the creator of everything. This is our Yah, and we, nurtured by Yah, a flock under Yah's care. Today, if to the voice you'll listen, harden not your heart as it was done at Meribah, as on a day of trial in the wilderness. There your predecessors tested me. They put to trial my patience, but they saw my power. For 40 years I argued with that generation, till finally I said, they are a people with a wandering heart, nor did they ever come to know my ways. And as for them, I swore amid my wrath that they'll not come into my place of rest. It's a harsh message for our generations. Um, so, but this has sustained people for years in the toughest of circumstances. I'm watching the um, series 1883, and it is really heart-wrenching to see what our ancestors struggled with. Psalm 96, sing out to the Redeemer a new song. Sing to the eternal all the earth. Sing to the sublime one, bless Yah's name. Bring news day after day of divine help. Tell it among the nations. Tell the glory among all the peoples. Tell of miracles. Yes, the radiance is great, subject of praise indeed, the sound of awe above all image gods. For all the nation gods are idols, but the living one has made the heavens. Think about what we have as modern idols. Grandeur and splendor belong to Yah, strength and beauty in the holy place. Give praise to the magnificent families of nations, honor and power devote to the Great One. Pay homage to majesty for the glory of the name, bear offering approach the courtyards, bow to the incomparable with holy adornment, Tremble in Yah's presence, all the earth. Declare among the nations that the eternal reigns. The world is founded, none can topple it. The peoples shall be judged unerringly. So this talk of judgment and um, the royalty metaphors, they are hard messages. Um, 
but people lived under tyranny for years, thousands of years, and that's what they knew as their life, uh, being subjects. So what does it mean in modern times to be a subject to an eternal creator? Really, it can change a whole perspective, and sometimes we need that in our lives. Let the skies rejoice, the earth have glee, ocean resound in all your fullness. Let the fields rejoice and all belonging there, and then all forest trees exclaim ecstatically before the one who comes, who comes to rule the earth, to rule over the settled world, over the peoples faithfully. So I like the message of mercy and justice uh, in terms of the ruler of the world with, who has wisdom. And these nature metaphors are great because that's when we see the divine presence most in the vastness of nature. Psalm 97, the uncreated reigns, O world, rejoice. Be happy, dwellers of all continents. Clouds and thick darkness surround Yah. Justice and judgment bear up the throne. A fire goes before it, flames surround its back. In lightning flashes light the world. In lightning flashes light the world. The earth beholds and trembles. Mountains melt like wax before the one, before the first of all the earth, whose justice all the skies declare, whose glory all the nations see. Let all who worship images be shamed, all those who boast amid their idols. Let all gods submit to Yah. Zion has heard and has rejoiced, the women of Judah sound their joy because of justice, yours, Yah. Okay, these images of mountains melting, they, they could be scary. I used to think that's like a nuclear thing, but there are um, interpretations of this metaphorically, which I'm not gonna get into. So don't take the word literally although sometimes it is meant to be taken literally. But really, this is supposed to touch us emotionally at the, to emphasize the power, awesome power, of a creator who can create or destroy at will. And uh, it's really meant to instill a sense of morality. If you think back to the days of Noah, um, what's the message of that story? I'm just posing questions to think about. I'm not giving answers, because I don't have the answers. For you are the radiance above all earth. Powerfully you have ascended over all the image gods. And you who love the great one hate the bad, so that the guardian of living souls might save them from the power of the wicked. Light beams are seated for the righteous, happiness for the steadfast of heart, Rejoice, O righteous ones, in the unnameable. Be thankful for its sacred trace. So here's a message of hope and an encouragement towards morality. What does it mean to be righteous, to obey laws, that, which are really universal laws of how we live and treat people? Ten Commandments, probably. Um, just think of the generations of people and before they had guidance and then what divine guidance meant to people's lives. It had good things and bad things throughout history, but ultimately it is that sense of morality that most people have sought in times of distress that gave them the strength they needed to move on and find the right path. Psalm 98, a psalm, sing out to the truthful a new song to one who has wrought wonders in the world. 
Okay, that words new song are very important to me because we don't want to repeat the past. We're evolving and there are new songs to be sung. There are new messages that we need to hear and talk about. And uh, this is resilience. Okay, so let's read that again. A psalm, sing out to the truthful a new song, to one who has wrought wonders in the world, whose right hand was of aid, as was the holy saving arm, who made the divine might renowned, revealed Yah's justice to the eyes of many nations, and who made remembered divine love and faithfulness to the community of Israel. I'm talking about the people who came out of Egypt here. To the farthest reaches of the earth, they saw our Yah's salvation. Trumpet out in joy, the awesome one's praise. Burst forth and sing and play your music. Music for the omnipresent on a violin, on strings with voice and melody, with horn playing and shofar blasts. A shofar is a ram's horn that is like a trumpet. It says, um, trumpet your praise before the sovereign to the one who is. Let the sea be in a tumult and the settled world and its inhabitants. And let the rivers clap their hands together and the mountains sing in joy to the one who comes to rule the earth, to rule the settled world with justice and all peoples with unerring deeds. So a lot of musical metaphors here. And uh, music is a very powerful means of getting in touch with spirituality, the right type of music, and it varies for each person. But um, these metaphors about um, rivers clapping, mountains singing, um, they're images meant to provoke that sense of awesomeness, that, that to have a creator who loves us so much, that is the uh, aim, to love our creator with all our heart, mind, and soul. And to, it's going to, as I said, he, it's programming. Our creator will rule the settled world with justice and peoples with unerring deeds. And that gives hope to people who are oppressed. And uh, it's that hope, yeah, hope can be a powerful motivator. That's all I'm going to say here. We, you need time to digest this. I need time to digest this. Psalm 99. The one of Sinai reigns as nations seethe and sits between the cherubim, angels. The earth is teetering. Okay, so I said angels. Um, there are different communities will have different words and try not to get hung up on words. This is a poem. It's a historical context. It is um, whatever works for you, substitute. And uh, nations are seething. Well, that's obvious today. Sits between the cherubim. The earth is teetering. Oh, no. On its axis? Well, <laughs> the metaphorical earth of the population is teetering. The one who dwells in Zion is magnificent, high above all peoples. Let them thank your name, so great and awesome, holy it is. With royal strength but loving justice, you have established equitable deeds. Justice and righteousness on Jacob's behalf have you performed. So the Bible gives us stories to provoke our thinking and the story of Jacob and his family and everything in his life. It's very powerful to a lot of people. And also Joseph was one of my favorites, that story. I'm not sure exactly what this is referring to. Justice and righteousness on Jacob's behalf have you performed. So this is King David writing this. 
Exalt the one who sees our Yah. Bow down before Yah's footstool. Yah is holy. Moses and Aaron are among Yah's priests, and Samuel among the ones who call Yah's name. So there's lots of stories for us to comfort us, to help us through tough times. Let's take advantage of them. Regardless of what you believe is true or not, a lot of us have a need to be right. Okay. Calling to the righteous one, who will respond to them? In a cloud pillar, Yah speaks to them. They keep Yah's precepts, and Yah gives them rulings. Great one, you have answered them. You were a forgiving God. You were a forgiving Yah for them. After you exacted penalty for things they did. That's referring to the golden calf. Exalt the name of the ineffable one. Bow down before the sacred divine mount. Yes, holy is the awesome one, our Yah. So bowing down is a tricky one. And what does it mean to bow down? It's submitting to authority. What is it? Um, and whose authority are you following? Are you following the creator of the universe who has a mission for you in your life while you're here? Maybe, maybe not. Um, see, it's meant to provoke questions more than answers. And for, as people mature and have life experience, to put it together in a context that gives meaning to life. And it comes in different forms. For some, it's raising children. For some, it's uh, limited. Okay, and we'll conclude with Psalm 29. A Psalm of David. Give to the one who is, you so-called gods. Give to the indivisible glory and strength. Give to the unseen one the glory of the divine name. Worship the ancient of days with holy ornament. The voice of the unending on the waters, Yah in full glory thundering. The one who calls over many waters. Yes, voice of the revealed one in full strength. Voice of the truthful in full beauty voice of eternal law breaking the cedars, the all-knowing smashing cedar forests on Mount Lebanon, making them skip about like calves. Yes, Lebanon and Syrian, like offspring of the wild ox, the voice of the just one hewing flames of fire, the voice of the anointer making the desert writhe of energy giving birth pangs to the wastelands of Kadesh, the voice of the mighty one convulsing all the deer, stripping the forests, while amid Yah's palace all declare the glory, the redeemer prevailing at the sea, the presence presiding for the cosmos, the wanderer imparting strength to Israel, the people of Israel who follow Israel, the precepts of Israel, giver of words, blessing the people in their peace. We all want peace. Um, to get peace, sometimes these horrible things happen. Um, it's a powerful psalm, but it this has a lot to dig into. There's historical references, and there is um, imagery like the cedar of Lebanon. If you've ever seen that tree, a cedar, it is huge, huge. <laughs> so thanks for spending some time to connect.